Mt. Gox was the biggest and most popular Bitcoin exchange, one of the earliest Bitcoin exchanges based in Tokyo. It was started by Jed McCaleb as a website for trading cards from the game Magic the Gathering. So the name Mt. Gox comes from Magic the Gathering Online Exchange. In 2011, a French guy named Marc Carpellis buys Mt. Gox, and shortly after that, the price of Bitcoin rises. The site becomes the most popular place to buy and sell Bitcoin in the world. Fast forward a few years later, in 2014, Mt. Gox all of a sudden goes dark. It comes out that they have lost 850,000 Bitcoins, worth more than $450 million at the time, and they basically go bankrupt. Mark is accused of stealing the money, and now you have 25,000 creditors, angry customers from Mt. Gox, who all want their money back. We are working on it, but anyway, in the meantime, we are sorry for the uh, troubles caused by this. At that point, it is the biggest and worst disaster Bitcoin has ever had. The Bitcoin price crashes. People have basically said that this could be the end of Bitcoin. At first, Mark Carpellis isn't charged with anything. People suspect him, but they don't really know. It's not until the summer of 2015 when Mark is arrested. They still don't have a suspect for who stole the money, but they arrest Mark and charge him with embezzlement and manipulating electronic data. Mark, last summer when the trial began, has admitted that he ran something called the Willybot, which was basically using loans from customer funds to trade on Mt. Gox, which people think he was doing to try to make up for the huge shortfall of Bitcoin. He served almost a year in jail. He was in solitary confinement, and for months straight, they interrogated him from morning to night, trying to get him to confess, which he says he couldn't confess because he didn't do what he was being accused of. In 2017, the US authorities arrested a Russian suspect, Alexander Vinnik, when he was on vacation in Greece. And there's evidence that most, almost 90% of the money stolen from Mt. Gox went directly into wallets controlled by Alexander Vinnik. He may not have actually stolen the money himself, but he's being charged with money laundering. So Mark Carpellis looks not quite as guilty as people once thought. A few days after Mt. Gox collapsed, Mark Carpellis was looking through some old digital wallets that he had and he comes across a lucky break, which is 200,000 Bitcoins in this old wallet that he just never believed were there. 2017, the Bitcoin price passed $2,000. That made it so the 200,000 Bitcoins left are actually worth billions of dollars. That's more than the entire 430 million that are owed to creditors. And under Japanese bankruptcy law, that surplus would go back to Mark Carpellis. None of the creditors want that, none of the lawyers want that, and even Mark says he doesn't want that money because he knows that if he ends up walking away with any money, let alone billions of dollars from Mt. Gox, he'll be fighting lawsuits and potentially death threats for the rest of his life. There's still 650,000 Bitcoins that have never been recovered. Mark believes either they can recover them potentially from the wallets that were controlled by Alexander Vinnick, or he could revive Mt. Gox in such a way or work with another exchange to basically earn those Bitcoins back and pay back creditors. Mark wants nothing more than to do right by his customers. He's been hated. He's been compared to the Martin Shkreli of the crypto world in Japan. He wants to be able to move on with his life and maybe not be the villain that he was made out to be.